What's happening guys? Kenny here again and today I've got another Apex review and what that's going to be about today is this guy. That's right guys, this is the Kirby Lambert drop collaboration uh, with Riot out of China as the manufacturer. Um, and if those of you guys that don't know, uh, Kirby Lambert is a custom knife maker out of uh, Canada. And I believe he's out of the Alberta province, which is where like Calgary and Banff is and stuff like that. Um, I believe that's where he's from. Um, but yeah, and he's a relatively young maker, right around my age, I believe, maybe a little older. But yeah, he's a uh, you know, young guy, seems like he's got some really cool designs, mostly like a, almost like a tactical design on most of his knives from what I can tell and um, almost like a dress tactical, like a, like a um, gentleman's carry tactical knife, which is not really my style, but uh, I really, um, you know, was intrigued by this knife. Um, in saying that, I'm gonna go ahead and explain really quick. Um, if you guys haven't watched my Apex uh, review videos before, I'll go ahead and link a dis um, in the description. There's a video I have explaining my methodology on these videos, the Apex reviews. Um, as, as I say in that, I don't get to use these as extensively as I would my hype versus reality videos. So it's somewhere in between a first impression and hype versus reality, a uh, full comprehensive review. Uh, so in saying that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into kind of like my overall view of this knife and why I kind of wanted to check it out and go ahead and put it on my list of knives coming from the Apex Pass Around group. And um, yeah, so, you know, when I first saw this knife, it was kind of like I saw it kind of coming down the chain um, of reviewers. I saw Banner 24-7's review of this and it really got me intrigued by it. Uh, just the fat carbon alone. So uh, fat carbon is a specific type of carbon fiber and I'll go more into that in the design and probably the fit and finish as well. But it's another bolster lock, which you guys just saw I had a bolster lock in the Wee Bishop. Uh, this is only the second one I've ever handled. So this is really cool to check out another bolster lock uh, manufactured by Riot instead of Wee. So another, you know, to see how Riot did with that, that same type of construction. Um, I was really intrigued by that. Also, I haven't gotten to try a RWL 34, oops, which this uh, blade steel is. And RWL 34 is, it's like a, it's pretty much an analog of uh, CPM 154 from Crucible. Uh, this is from a, a steel maker in France. Uh, I think it's called Era Steel. And it is a powdered metallurgy uh, process, although I'm not too familiar with their specific PM process. Um, yeah, so RWL34 being like CPM154, I have also not tried one, um, CPM154. I've used 154CM uh, um, pretty extensively, so and I love 154CM. Uh, so I, I can only imagine that I would just as you know probably love RWL 34 and CPM 154 just as much if not more with it having the powdered metallurgy uh, process so yeah I was really intrigued to try that although with it being an apex review knife I'm not going to be able to sharpen it so I didn't really get to try it like I would have wanted to but in saying that uh, the aesthetics of the knife I really did dig the you know bolster lock with the fat carbon um, I like the blade shape a lot, but I'll get more into that uh, later. Um, and then, you know, I just really was intrigued by this knife. It, it just looks awesome. Um, it seemed like something I would dig. So I, I figured let's go ahead and get it in. Uh, what's it gonna hurt? You know, it's not like I have to pay for these knives, which is the nice, the nice thing. I get to check them out without having to pay. So, well, I mean, except for like shipping and all that, but that's another story. Um, yeah, so first things first, I'm going to go into the specs. Um, I'll go ahead and put those on the page right now. Need to get going on this. Uh, don't want to waste you guys' time, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, then I'll bring you guys back and go ahead and go into some size comparisons. Got the Shaman. This is with my freshly reground blade. 
I know uh, you guys on YouTube haven't really seen that. If you're on my Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this guy already after the regrind. Uh, then the pair of three. Uh, you can see the Kirby Lambert drop, uh, rain is very similar to the to the Shaman as far as overall length. Then we got some bench maids. Let's bring in the 560-1 Freak. The 940-1501, I believe. Knife works exclusive. Uh, yeah, you can see it's really, really similar to the Freak as well. Go ahead and bring in the Hinder. Uh, XM18, this is the Slicer um, Skinny, full size XM18. And then we'll go ahead and bring in a budget option. Uh, this is the Real Steel Terra. These are all very similar size knives. I thought they would be good size comparisons. Can get a really good idea of how big this uh, Kirby Lambert Rain is. And then going right into it, um, I'm going to start about the aesthetics of this knife. Um, I kind of talked about this in the overall. Um, again, this is a very subjective part of this uh, review. Um, I dig the aesthetics. Um, it's a little blocky, in my opinion, closed. Like, I don't love the way this part of the knife looks, um, to be perfectly honest. And even open, like, I don't love the handle but I do love the shape of the blade. Um, although there is one aspect that I think you guys know where I'm gonna go with this, that it, it just kind of uh, blows it for me. But yeah, I really do love the blade shape. It's got that kind of like hunter uh, drop point with like a clip point style. Really cool blade, really cool blade style with that swedge that's almost like two thirds swedge really nicely done so that's really nice um, as far as um, so as far as aesthetics go I thought it was a cool looking knife um, I don't love the handle but overall I, I really do like the way it looks especially with the fat carbon um, the fat carbon is it's made I believe the maker of fat carbons from um, from Europe but I'm not sure where their manufacturing facility is. I believe it's a small company. And they use, they make this fat carbon using some kind of um, ceramic additive. And then it's heat treated. So this is different than other um, carbon fibers. And it gives it that, that green. I believe the, whatever ceramic they use, they use some kind of glaze that it has a, a green hue to it. They have different colors. They have red. Uh, this one's called jungle wear. If you go on Fat Carbon site, you can see it. Um, yeah, there's they have a bunch of different styles. But they use some kind of ceramic additive. And then they heat treat it, so it's really hard. Everything's like really solid together. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, let's see if I can get the layers to show here. Really cool. You can see how it kind of has a wavy pattern in the layers. You can see the backspacers done with the same carbon. Really beautiful touch, guys. Really amazing looking carbon fiber. I love it. Um, so that part of the aesthetics I love, and that kind of feeds into the fit and finish, where as, as you guys can see, the finish on this knife is spectacular. Um, this is kind of like a, a stone wash and then like uh, kind of a polish to it, almost like satin stone wash. Uh, the carbon fiber is obviously just gorgeous. The finish is done very well. Uh, the finish on the clip matches the the bolster or frame, whatever you want to call it. And um, the blade finish is done very nicely. Another stone wash. It accents the, the handle scales nicely. Almost looks like one piece a little bit, although, of course, the titanium has a little bit different hue than the steel, but it's a very similar finish. So that's nice. Uh, not a lot of contrast, but it looks pretty pretty cool. And I really dig that. 
Um, and then as far as fit goes, um, for the most part, the fit is done amazingly. Sorry about the noise in the background, guys. We got the windows open this morning. Um, as far as fit goes, um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, aesthetics, guys, I love the way that backspacer, how they do that. It's almost like standoff slash backspacer. And it is beautifully done. The way it hooks around there. Man, that also kind of leads into design. But as far as fit goes, um, this carbon fiber, you can see there's a little gap right there. But I'm being super critical. Man, that's the neighbor's dog. It just won't shut up sometimes. Um, you can see a little bit of gap right there, but it's really subtle. See it right there, a little worse. Nothing that bothers me, really. We are getting super critical. For the most part, Riot does an excellent job as far as fit and finish goes, so I was not surprised to see this guy is no exception. Uh, this is also kind of a prototype, guys, so the one you get might even be better than this. You can see it's just beautifully, beautifully fit. And as far as the touch, guys, I can't even feel this transition. It's almost like it was made out of one piece. Super impressive. I can kind of feel it there. Not on this side, though. I could feel this transition a little bit. Again, this is me being super critical, guys. Super critical. Yeah, I can't even feel this transition. Um, I'm sure with different temperatures, you might get a different um, reaction here. You can kind of feel it if you're going really fast, you can feel that transition, but ever so slightly but just amazingly done, guys. Um, perfectly centered, of course. I never would expect anything less from Riot. Uh, the grind was done well. Um, the hollow grind was done very well. And there is a little bit of a, you can see the plunge grind comes out a little bit further than their choil, but it's really close and you don't see much, I don't think you'd get too much smile with sharpening but a little bit, right at the end, right there, you'd get a little bit of smile. Uh, we'll come back to that at the end. Um, oh, actually, we'll come back to that in design. Uh, yeah, so everything's done really well as far as uh, finish and fit go. Action's very smooth, detent's excellent as far as that fit goes. Um, pretty tight tolerances, as you guys can see. We definitely got some pocketed um, bearings. Obviously, I did not take this apart with it being an Apex review, uh, Apex pass around knife. In saying that, I'm gonna go into design. So as far as design goes, uh, this is kind of a, it's a little bit of a polar type of knife because you have your, you know, your cutaways here. So you're gonna be kind of forced into a certain grip um, also, you've got a giant recurve in the blade. Um, these are the biggest design things that someone might have an issue with. Um, as far as this goes, I don't think that many people would have much of an issue. Um, I think it's done pretty well to where even if you have small hands, I don't think you'd find this to be jamming you up or pushing you back. Or if you had big hands, I don't think you'd have an issue with this not like not fitting your um, forefinger, your index finger. So I, I don't think that that would be a design issue for anybody. Um, as far as the blade goes though, um, yes. <laughs> uh, this is an issue for me. Uh, this is kind of where the knife misses for me, to be honest. Um, I just don't understand recurves. Uh, I mean, I understand them. I understand them functionally, um, being able to draw material uh, it, it, it does help in cutting, but then it does not help in sharpening and subsequent sharpenings. You also end up with a shallower space here than you could have. It would be a broader angle. You'd have a thinner behind the edge dimension right here if it was just a straight blade. 
you'd also have more life to the blade. Now, this is just gonna go up higher. It's gonna get thicker quickly um, while you have this belly out here still maintaining that same thickness. So, uh, I don't love it, guys. And honestly, it's the, it's the big miss on this knife for me personally. Um, you know, spoiler alert. Um, the, the recurve, guys, it, it's just, it, it's the ugly. It's the ugly in this situation here because um, I, I just don't like recurves personally. And I know a lot of guys don't like recurves, at least in EDC knives. If we're talking like a camper, hunter or something like that, then yeah, having a recurve is nice. Um, it helps with drawing through materials. Um, it really does help when you're cutting through a lot of cardboard um, to help, you know, with that as well in EDC work. If you're like, because it does kind of pull the material and keep it in this pocket. So in use, it's nice, but in sharpening, it's a pain, guys. And as far as stropping, it's a pain. You almost have to make a specific strop that has a contour to it to do that recurve. Um, you can make a strop, technically. You can make one with a flat side and one with a contoured side. So you could go back and forth. Um, but, you know, it's just another thing to think about. And I, I don't... I really don't like recurves personally, but another, you know, that's a subjective thing. So I don't want to say, you know, that's why I said it's more of a, you know, polar polarizing type of thing with the blade shape and the handle. So yeah, that's the thing of the design that I think is going to be like a hit or miss with you personally. Um, and the bolster lock, I do love that part of the design. I love the backspacer of this, the design. It's beautifully done, guys. Holy crap. The way that it tucks that blade in is just spectacular. I saw that. I was like, yeah, that is sweet. And then you got your lanyard uh, tube kind of integrated. Just a beautiful touch, guys. I love it. I really do. Um, yeah, um, nice, thick, um, you know, blade stock. So if you're looking to pry, it does hold a lot of, to the tip, um, especially with the swedge, the way that does, it brings a lot to the tip. You see that line right there, it goes straight to the tip. So you still got a pretty nice, uh, robust tip. Very nicely done. Oh, and as far as fit and finish goes, guys, look at that gr blade grind. So symmetrical, guys. Everything terminates so, so perfectly. So nicely done by Riot and beautiful hollow grind. Very well done. Very thin behind the edge. We'll get into that um, in performance. So uh, design was great. Uh, action is pretty stellar, guys. Um, I'm gonna show you, uh, as far as light switch, it flies out. Uh, detent is just so tuned in on this knife, guys. Uh, dropping action is amazing as well. Um, push button is even more of a rocket uh, deployment. The sound, guys. You can almost see it recoil. Has like a kick to it. Um, and then it has this nice pocket here. Just perfect for um, light switch. Beautifully done. And then the action, it stays where you put it. But it is just that light shake shot. I mean, like, you could either swing it in very easily, or you can just, you know, slow roll it, obviously. Look at this detent. Nice and sucks it in. Very, very pleasing. Um, and then you guys see where this. Okay, that's where the detent, and they do, Riot does do like uh, detent ramps. So you see there's no, it, I could just easily push it past, but that's where it does um, interact right there. And then that's off. So you got plenty of room guys to just drop it down. You're past the detent, light shake shut. Really enjoyable um, action. Uh, going into the blade. Yeah, guys, uh, RWL34, nice steel. Like I said, it's like CPM154. Uh, Riot seems to do a good job with their, um, their heat treat process and seem to get their um, 
HRC numbers where they need to be. So I'm I'm happy. I, I'm sure it, this is no exception. Um, RWL34 is a great composition, guys. It's a great all-around steel. It should be, you know, relatively tough for a PM steel. So uh, good edge stability. Um, really, you know, like really great uh, edge retention or uh, wear resistance. It should should be about a you know B as as uh, Banner Twenty Four Seven says. It's like a B, you know, maybe like it's not going to be on the level of your S One Ten Vs and your like Ten V steels, but it's it's in that like middle range where you're going to get for most people. This is like probably the pinnacle. You know, you don't want to go more because it's so hard. You know, hard hard to sharpen. But um, it takes longer to sharpen, it takes more skill, it takes certain types of abrasives once you get over this level. So this is that like top of the line for like people that are just, just normal EDC guys. If you're a blade steel fanatic or if you love sharpening or if you're like really into like edge retention, you can go higher than this. But this is like really the pinnacle of most people's EDCs. That's why M390, I mean a lot of guys, M390 is almost like, that's like a steel nerd steel. That's not necessarily like your everyday average knife guy or, you know, that's why we talk about like, hey, maybe it's not for everybody if it's at 62 to 64, but at 59 to 60, it's not going to perform much better than this stuff right here. So yeah, maybe with rope or something, but not with most people's everyday um, tasks. So in saying that, um, you're going to get an excellent amount of performance. And I don't think just because this is RWL 34 that you guys... Don't, that this isn't worth the two hundred and fifty dollars. I think these were two hundred and fifty um, in the pre order, and and then they're going to be two ninety nine after the pre order. So I don't think I think you'll be happy with RWL thirty four, especially if it's treated properly. So I think the blade, um, I think the blade's great. I love the like heft to the blade and the way it it flies out and closes because of that heft. Um, although it is, you know, hollow ground, so you get a relatively thin behind the edge dimension, which we'll check out right now. Oh, of course my uh, calipers want to take a crap on me right now. All right, here we go. Zeroed. Um, yeah, guys. 13 thousands at the belly oh 12 so that's solid 13 12 again 13 there so pretty solid and then um, at the tip I'm sure it thickens up a bit Yeah, we're looking at about 20 thousandths at the tip, 21. So really nice grind, guys. Um, although you'll see that because of this, because of the saber grind, because this goes pretty low, you don't have much room for this grind. So it is an aggressive hollow grind and it did thicken up quick. So I noticed in like pushing through really thick materials, it does want to bind up a little bit when the materials don't want to give and, and relax when you're pushing through. So that's the one thing I noticed because of how short that hollow grind is, but it is done extremely well. And I really did enjoy how that hollow grind is. Um, but yes, guys, this is the part of this blade that I really just do not like, um, that recurve. And I think it kind of ruins a an overall amazing blade shape and beautiful, beautiful design on the blade shape. So yeah, that's the blade guys. Um, performance wise, the thing performed very well. Um, you know, it for what it is, it's a very thick stock with a short grind. Um, I don't expect it to be an amazing slicer, although it does slice well because it's hollow ground. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be better could be better but it is what it is I'm take a drink of coffee he kind of promotes it i think they're kind of more like a tactical uh gentleman's carry you got a nice robust tip i'm sure this thing would pierce very well if you needed to um it's not going to move in your hand due to those uh those ergonomics which we're going to get into right now 
So for what it is, I think the blade shape is, is it's, it's a good choice. Um, the thickness and everything, it's good. It, it, everything's good about it. I just don't think it would be great if you were like using it as a work knife, cutting all day. Um, ergonomically, maybe, but uh, blade grind, I think this could be done better if they just came higher with the saber grind, possibly. You'd have more room. If they didn't do this recurve and just let it stay, you'd have more room here to get even thinner. So yeah, just a few things I would kind of, would kind of keep me from going for this guy. Um, as far as uh, ergonomics, it worked very well. Um, I didn't notice any issue with the, you know, these wells, the finger wells here, finger choils. Um, the one gripe I have about the ergonomics of this knife is the edges. Um, everything's chamfered well. You see this on the inside, as Riot always does. I should have showed this. Um, everything is chamfered very well. But really hard edge here, guys. Um, it is chamfered nicely. But what I did notice in, um, in use is that it feels a little blocky. This is a pretty hard edge. It's, it's chamfered, but it's, it's a little blocky. And I did notice, like, if I was pushing really hard, I'd feel this, this, this hard edge here. But, again, guys, I am talking, like, full-on, like, you're, like, jamming through something. Um, if, you know, if I went really thick on the cardboard, or if the cardboard is really thick, I would notice that the, these hard edges. Other than that, the thing is done amazingly. Um, you know, everything's chamfered really beautifully. Um, I love the ergonomics of the, the pocket clip. It really fits in the hand beautifully. Don't even notice that pocket clip. Um, just amazing. Amazing as far as it fits in the hand. Just a little bit hard on the edge. That's all. And th again, that's like me like really nitpicking. So, um, in saying that, uh, the carry. It carries very well, guys. Uh, this clip... Perfect ramp. Um, it could be a little steeper on the on the inside here just to hold retention better But I didn't notice anything of it wanting to slide really good retention um, Really nice clearance you're on the carbon fiber. So it goes in and out super easy It's bolster lock or you know this frame lock is hidden by this overlay so you don't have any issue um, getting in with that um, the cutaway for the for the frame lock so really smooth going in and out. Uh, it does, you know, it does kind of go straight down in the pocket. It doesn't swing back like a lot of knives do. Um, and this tab does stick out, but I don't, I don't notice that much. And going in and out, this is really nice. You could feel this a little bit, this corner, but I mean, guys, again, I'm nitpicking. Um, it's not bad and really comfortable going by it. So really nicely done. Um, it's not too broad this way. Even the pair of three with that spidey hole is going to be broader. Um, probably about the broadness of the, yeah, of the Freak. That's how it's going to be with a flipper tab. Imagine the Freak with a flipper tab. Full-size Freak. Um, and then as far as weight goes, this guy has a nice weight for how big that blade is. For, yeah, 5.8, guys. This thing's a little heavy um, for my preference. And that's where I'd say, like, as far as design things go... One thing I would have probably done is mill that inside. Probably would have made this guy even more expensive, but there is no internal milling. And you see how thick those, uh, those scales are. That is a big ass beefy knife, thick blade. Um, it's, it is definitely a, a hefty guy. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention the drop logo. I love that they're doing that now. Um, this thing has Kirby Lambert's little, uh, Spider with Lambert there and nothing else. Just that drop logo right there. I know I'm a little all over the place with this one, guys. I should have mentioned that in the fit and finish probably or design. But yeah, um, er, uh, carry is pretty good. Um, a little heavy. Um, not the most amazingly slim knife in the pocket, but yeah, really well done. Um, you know, for 5.8 ounces, it carried well. But that is in, on the heavy side of what I normally carry. So not, not moaning, but just something to, to note. 
Um, in conclusion, guys, as far as this knife goes overall, um, I think it's a great option for, depending on what you're looking for. Um, if you're just looking for a dress carry um, and you like like that three and a half inch blade, um, you know, beefy knife that's got some heft to it, some weight, I would say this is a great option. If you're looking for something slim, something like to perform like for you all day at work, um, something lighter, this isn't the, this isn't the knife for you guys. Um, this is definitely one of those. For me, um, it's one of the ones that I would carry on, on occasion, which makes this a knife that I probably would not buy personally. Um, I'm going to send this one along and I probably won't think about it again, except for maybe that fat carbon. <laughs> Um, yeah, so other than that, I, I think it's a great knife. I just don't think it's for me personally. Um, if, if you like those hefty, like, you know, heavier, just like solid feeling knives, um, and you like carbon fiber, different kinds of carbon fiber, um, if you like Riot's, you know, attention to detail as far as their fit and finish, um, you can slightly feel these, the hardware could have been sunk just a little bit, but. I mean, you're gonna feel it no matter what. Again, just nitpicking. But yeah, just amazingly done by Riot. Really just a beautiful piece. Um, really impressed by their uh, fit and finish, just their attention to detail. I love what I've seen from Riot. And we also have been seeing that they push their uh, heat treat um, and, and really go above and beyond with their grinding after heat treat. So really, really impressed by that. and. I would say that this is a great option depending on what you're looking for. So, I mean, that's that. This is just kind of a polarizing type of knife to me. So it really just depends on your personal preference and if this fits into your collection. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that I um, covered everything. Um, I do enjoy this knife. Um, thank you guys on the uh, Apex Pass Around group again for letting me be part of it and for sending this guy along. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy this. Have a great day.